Good morning. Welcome back to the Y254 channel. You are watching Y in the morning. My name is Joy Mochache. You can find me in select platforms, Joy underscore Mochache. And like I said, Mondays are my favorite days. Why? Because of this Maze health segment where we actually let people know uh, different things about our health and both psychological and body wise as we're doing today. Ways in which to improve your life health wise and also to assist our youngsters and their parents. And so, if you want to reach out to us, please feel free to do so. Hashtag help on Monday, hashtag why in the morning at joy underscore mochache and ask whatever you'd like to ask or comment whatever you'd like to comment. And our social media handles are right down there at the bottom of the screen. Karibu Nisana today as we talk to a nutritionist and a psychologist. And what we're covering today is actually behavior in children and how it affects uh, nutrition and how it affects behavior in children and how it goes both ways actually how nutrition can affect behavior in children and behavior in children is affected by nutrition so let's check it out by welcoming our guests karibu nisana please introduce yourself i'm jesse marco john uh -huh. uh, child psychologist okay yeah. child psychologist all right um, and the mighty and the nutritionist. Okay, so we have a child psychologist, a psychologist and a nutritionist on here. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's just jump right in and start off by, I guess, hashing out the terms so that people understand what we're talking about exactly. What do we say when we say behavior in children and nutrition? What's a simple way of explaining that, that sentence? Let me start with you, Emily. All right. Uh, then we'll go to him. Nutrition first is the uptake of minerals mm -hmm. to help our body function rightly. Because uh, our body is an automated machine. Mm -hmm. It works on its own. Eh? But every machine has an engine which requires fuel. So our body always needs nutrients for it to be able to function. Yes. And so when you talk about behavior and nutrition, there is how the nutrition, the aspect of our having nutrients in the body affects our body function mm -hmm. and how our body grows, especially the cognitive development affects how we behave towards food, especially for young children. And for people who are watching who don't know what cognitive development, what do you mean by cognitive development? Cognitive development is the mental development, it's how the mind functions, it's how the system functions. You know, we are all controlled by, this, by the nervous system, the central nervous system. Yeah. So how our, what our brain the signal sent to our brain is what makes us act in a certain way so when you talk about cognitive development affecting nutrition it's how our thinking how the signals are sent to our to our brain affects the outlook on food and diet which ultimately affect the lifestyle that we live okay thank you for that and and you said you're a nutritionist and so what you're going to cover is the angle through how it affects um especially things like development and growth in the body, yes? Yes. Sure. And for cognitive development, that would be more of your area? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so yours is body, yours is psychological. Yeah. How does food affect a child psychologically, in, in very simple terms, umbrella to begin with? Okay, first of all, I'll, I'll say psychology is the study of the mind. Yes. And the behavior, behavior of maybe children and uh, maybe adults, but uh, majorly I deal with children. So we see how a child behaves yes. uh, from the mental structure, how, how, how mental is growing mm -hmm. through a process because majorly we look at from conception yes. up to adolescence. Yes. So you see these things start from when the child is conceived and in the process you see how the, the mind or the brain develops and how this brings about the behavior because we have children who may behave differently in connection to how they're brought up and the environment where they're brought up mm -hmm. and, and the foods they eat. Mm. And majorly food affects the growth mm. of the brain of a child I so see. much. Mm. Yeah. All right. And so there are studies into the effect that food has an altering mood and behavior um, effect on children. But then there's mixed feelings about this. Uh, like I had said before, there was a question that was asked by one of our uh, previous presenters who was saying that uh, in our country right now, is it, can we really connect food and behavior? And if there's a parent listening, is there a parent that can really think that, uh, is there a way that food is connected to my child's behavior or my child's development? What would you like to say to that as, as experts? Let's start with you, Emily. Okay. Um, first in the Kenyan context. In the Kenyan context, how food affects behavior. Yes. All right. So, food, as you said, it's a fuel, right? And uh, mostly, uh, as you said, there is a physical development of a child. 
it is the cognitive development of a child and the social development of a child. Mm. How a child behaves with their peers or how a child behaves with their parents. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the physical development, food does affect that. Okay. Nutritional wise. Actually, right now in Kenya, statistics are like 26% are of the children in Kenya start, have stunted growth. Yeah. Have stunted growth? Yeah. Meaning they're not growing? <laughs> or. <laughs> 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 what it means, it means that the physically their height requirements as compared to their age is really not right. Oh, okay. I think, I think I think go hapo. I think I'm one of those ones. <laughs> and when it comes to the to the nutrients that are okay, first of all the bone growth goes up to twenty three right now. Before it was up to eighteen years, but right now it's up to twenty three years. You you can grow until the age of twenty three. Yeah. That's wrong. Well, According to the current research, before we always thought it's up to 18 years, but right now actually it has been proven it's up to 23 years. And so mm. what you begin eating determines your structure. It really depends because calcium is the one that is responsible for the skeletal, meaning skeletal development of the body. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, calcium is also required for the brain development mm -hmm. as well as omega-3 also for the brain, iodine for the brain, zinc for the brain, things like iron for the blood formation. So everything about your body is linked to nutrients. Yeah. I see. So if you don't take adequate nutrients mm -hmm. or you take an excess of a certain nutrient, mm -hmm. okay, which is called overnutrition, because over nutrition is divided into overnutrition and undernutrition. Okay. So when you, you have undernutrition, this is the way a child just behaves. Uh, and under a child with undernutrition is easily re irritable. Mm -hmm. You see, the children are really active children. That one who is who has low nutrients, as compared to what their body really needs, they, they don't really, they have a short concentration span. They don't like being active. They just they are lonely kind of children. And so all that is what we call with that's how we link in behavior. Nutrition. I okay. see. When the right nutrients are not really there for a child to be able to perform optimally. I see. Yeah. Thank you for that. There are some things you mentioned the iodine, the zinc, and whilst I go to uh, Mr. Jesse, I want you to maybe uh, we'll come back to you and you can give us examples of foods where parents can uh, so examples of foods where these chemicals can be found the iodine, and the zinc, and the sodium, and all that. Uh, how about you? So we're saying that. Right here in Kenya, it's a divided thing. She's given us when it comes to body development, yeah. how parents in Kenya are taking it, and she's given us statistics about it. What about psychologically? Do you think that um, our parents are ready to accept the fact that food affects children psychologically? And if not, do you think it's important that they do? I think uh, it's a very important thing that they should consider. Because yeah. in growth and development of a child, more so in terms of food. We see uh, children who are best, uh, breastfed for six months. Uh -huh. That is exclusive breastfeeding. Yes. They tend to have a better development of the brain and even their physical structure than kids who are not uh, breastfed for six months. Huh. Why? Because it has been, it says, uh -huh. uh, such that has been done, that breast milk provides all the nutrients that are needed. Mm -hmm. And even during breastfeeding, there is a, a connection between the, the child and the mother. That's when the child uh, knows the mother. There's a connection. And that helps even in the brain development when the child is looking at the mother just through the eyes. Oh, yeah, yeah. It helps in brain development. Really? And I find that even when, when a mother is, <laughs> you know, a mother is breastfeeding the child, there's a way they engage. Yes. Cuddling mm. and helping. You know, cuddling alone is the way of helping the brain to develop. Of course. Because, uh, as, as a, a child psychologist, we usually tend to tell parents mm -hmm. that when a child is uh, from a neonate stage, uh -huh. that's when the child is born, mm -hmm. uh, the first three weeks, <coughs> you should always make sure that you cuddle the, the head. Oh, is that this why I see some parents rubbing the children's heads for ages? I'm like, yeah. hey, mommy, relax. You've been doing that for 30 minutes. Uh -huh. It arouses the senses of the brain so the brain can start Wow. Function. So if this one is not done, yeah. the senses, because the brain has billions of ne neurons, and at that early age, they grow very fast. Huh. And they are very sensitive. So if they are not aroused to that sensitivity, mm -hmm. they can't work well. I see. Then now, after that, now, w which meals are you going to introduce? 
the mm. supplements after breastfeeding. Mm. They're very important because mm. one, you must consider that this child was taking breast milk, which was in a, a finer content, but now you are introducing solid foods. Yeah. These solid foods must have the same nutrients as the wow. breast milk. Yes. Of which if you introduce other foods that have got maybe high sugar levels, mm. let, let me talk about sugar levels. Like okay. most parents like packing uh, juice for their kids. Juice is very wrong. Ribena. Because <laughs> Ribena, and the, if you look at them, they have like 78.9 kilojoules of sugar. Right. And during this age of children, they are so active. Mm. The activities because of the development of motor neurons, mm -hmm. the mo motor muscles, fine motor muscles and gross motor muscles, yes. which are the hands and the, the, the bones and everything. I so see. they need a lot of energy, but they don't need that extra energy which is, in, uh, which is included in the foods, mm. like the foods that they were talking about, like the sodas and everything. Mm. So this, this work by after introducing a child to this, you will find a child becomes aggressive. Aggressive? Aggressive. Wow. And they start throwing tantrums. Huh. Who would have Very thought? Very hyperactive. Interesting. Yeah. So these kids we see throwing tantrums <laughs> in uh, t throwing tantrums in supermarkets. <laughs> it's it's because of foods. Because, because of foods. Because the foods food that they were introduced to after the six months, mm. they were not the same. Uh, they, they did not carry the same nutrient content mm -hmm. as the breast milk. Mm. So every time you introduce a child into new foods, you must be considerate. Mm. And you know, sometimes parents just say, let them go. Yeah, and okay. I've seen this also affecting the learning process of children in schools. Uh -huh. I've been with kids for 10 years. ECD. What? Yeah. And I've seen it really affecting. You've and seen it really affect affecting. children. And most parents tell us, they give us the children to tame. We can't tame them at school tame it's because my bad. work is to feed the mind with information what about food you can't do that i yeah. can't do that that's not your part that's yeah. our part i'm not i'm not <laughs> feeding them at school you yeah know? so parents just push them and they say, they, then they say my fix child is them. behaving this way mm. we, we can't fix them mm. it is not one hand mm. it is both hands yeah so i have to do my part and she has or he has to do. The parent has to do the part yeah, by yeah. making sure the kid is feeding yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, so so it is, there is a connection to that. And I hope that the parents who are listening to what we're talking about right now, because we had kind of downplayed the importance of behavior and development when it comes to food yeah. um, and psychological behavior. But it seems that there is a real link right there, a real link. And please, let's go back to you. And I'd like to say, since he has told us about breastfeeding, mm -hmm. and uh, by the way, I think it was last week, was a whole week was breastfeeding week i don't know if you're aware yeah, and yeah, so yeah. on health monday we were discussing about the breastfeeding so i'm glad you brought that in yeah, yeah. but now to go back to you after the breastfeeding is done mm -hmm. now comes nutrition yeah. now comes feeding baby solid food yeah. for development body wise he has talked about psychologically what are some of the foods we can give our children at that time they have finished uh, breastfeeding now they're starting to grow to make sure they grow properly in the way that we want them to because me, I'm a small girl. I can give you a story, a short one. I like giving my experiences. My mom always told me that I hated milk. I hated milk with a passion. I don't know why. And so she says I was born, what they say, small boned. You know how they say the Kunawan while I big boned and small boned, you know. Yeah, yeah. And so my bones are not exactly as big as many other people's bones. Because mm -hmm. I just hated milk all my life. And I don't know. Tell us about food, though. To my channel, breastfeeding. Sasani, food. <laughs> okay, first of all, there is the introduction of continuous feeding. Okay. That is from six months. Cause the breast Could you milk, please put that? Yeah. Right. Because the breast milk can no longer satisfy the child mm -hmm. and it can no longer reach the nutrient requirement for the child. So, from six months is the introduction of complementary feeds. But at that stage, you don't tell the mother to stop breastfeeding. They need oh. to continue breastfeeding until at least the child is one year old. But we are on, uh, on the go society. We are in the society where we are at work, we are looking for money. Yes, okay? yes. So we have to accept that mostly it stops at six months. Okay. So uh, from six months onwards, there are certain kinds of food that really needs to be introduced because the, what the breast milk was not really given in sufficiency. 
and one of it is vitamin A. That's mm -hmm. why in the immunization, when you take your child at six months, they're given the vitamin A tab at six months. And at nine months, they're also given vitamin A. Now, this vitamin A is supposed to be supplemented until five years. But what most parents do after the jabs, after the nine-month jab, then don't go back. Mm -hmm. And unless if the child is really sick, mm -hmm. that's when they take the child back to hospital. Mm -hmm. And when they take back the child back to hospital, that, that's when they're given the vitamin A. Mm -hmm supplements but the reason why vitamin a is really required is number one it's used for the immune system remember most we, most of the parents say that the, my child uh is sick up to five years mm -hmm. you know they're they're really delicate up to yeah. five years yeah they keep saying that up to five years but that's because the immune system is really not that strong mm -hmm. Okay, okay. For a child, as you said, who has gone through EBF, mm. the immunity is really good. But once you don't also introduce enough foods rich in vitamin A to help it boost the immunity, that is on top of macronutrients. Macronutrients are full like uh, energy-rich food, protein-rich foods, and some fats and oils. Okay. And so vitamin A comes from anything that is yellowish. Let me put it in layman's language. Please do. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> so. Lately, there is this one called the orange fleshed sweet potato. Orange fleshed sweet yeah, potato. Yeah, it's something that Center for International Potato has come up with. Okay. It's really rich in vitamin A, and one of their ways, they, 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 they had to come up with such a thing so that the, the parents can easily assess that kind of vitamin A that is readily available. First and foremost, I need you to know that vitamin A can really... Uh -huh. It escapes with heat. Let me put it in layman's escapes language. With heat? Yes. Okay. So vitamin A rich foods don't need to really be exposed to a lot of heat. They just need a small amount of heat. Mm. So every time you you picking a pumpkin to a point where it's mushy, know that you've lost all almost the all the vitamin A. <laughs> to be specific, yeah. Yes. And then there's next the next one is called iron. Actually, on children after six months to five years, there's something known as hidden malnutrition. Mm. The hidden malnutrition is that one of vitamin A, iron, iodine, as well as vitamin D. So ap apart from vitamin A, then there's something something else comes in that is known as iron. Yes. Iron is good for. The body, the entire body functions with blood. Blood takes nutrients. Mm -hmm. Blood brings out uh, toxic things for it to go to the kidney and everything. So we basically function with blood. So when it comes to iron, iron actually comes from green leafy vegetables. Green, leafy. green your leafy. managus and yeah, everything. your managus, the greenish stuff. Yeah. Okay. Now with this intake of iron, you have to know this something known as nutrient-nutrient interaction, meaning what I take can interact in the body to a way that it enhances the absorption of what I take or it inhibits what I take so I end up excreting everything as I took it in. So when you're taking you're giving your child these green leafy vegetables which are rich in iron, including the use of liver and some lean meat. Yeah. Those are what is rich in iron, then you have to give it in hand in hand with nini with vitamin C rich foods. Because that one enhances absorption of the iron. Mm. Okay, vitamin C rich foods are mostly citrus fruits. Okay, so citrus fruits include lemon, oranges. it includes oranges, it includes um, guavas, it includes um, or what are they called these orange like grapefruit? Yeah, grapefruits. It includes all that. But what most parents do is when they're giving their kid meals, after the, your, your child has taken uh, uh, the, the green leafy vegetables, you give them milk next. You know, finish up that food, then you take the milk. Okay, milk has a calcium that binds the iron. So once you give your child the iron, mm. <laughs> then you give them the milk, uh. the, the child will eventually take everything to the toilet. And that's why you have anemic cases in children. You know, wow. <laughs> the calcium itself that was in the milk really has not even helped the child, and that's why even today we have. There's even an order in eating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. yeah, that is what is called nutrient nutrient interaction. Wow. Yeah. Yes. So you can give a, your body a nutrient, then you give the, your body an anti nutrient based on the next food that you eat. Then so you, uh, <laughs> end up in the. Then you just go and end up in the loop. So after some time, you see your child is really weird. You know, the child is turning pale. Your child is not really inter- active in class, and your, your your teacher calls you and tells you, you know, can't come and pick your child. And when you go to the hospital you're told your child really doesn't have enough blood mm. you're like what happened I always i'm always giving them the right kinds of food mm. but really when you give them the right kinds of food what is the accompaniment I to see. that kind of food thank you for that emily there's there's um a couple of clips i wanted us to watch but before we do that i want you to uh, start off by maybe just quickly explaining then we'll watch the, co- the clips and then you'll come back in with that then we'll continue with emily Maybe you can just tell us real quick when it comes to um, mental things like ADHD, because there's a time we discussed we discussed ADHD here, and it's quite a common um, mental disorder. I think actually yeah. I don't like that word. I don't like the word disorder. Uh, what's a, what's a polite way to classify mental illnesses? Is it just a mental illness? Okay, uh, in as much as we may like to look for a polite word. But uh, th- these things are there. It's the way it is. We, we, so we, I can we, say mental yeah, illness. Yeah, we just have to accept So when it comes to ADHD, disorders. the mental illness, yeah. um, a lot of our children, I think in schools, Yeah, yeah. wow, no attention, no concentration, no nothing. And she's explained a few things. Um, so even teachers calling and saying, come and pick your uh, kid yeah, up yeah, from school. Yeah, yeah. But she's talking about physical ailments. Um, I'd like for you to quickly say, do you think that it's important for uh, schools to include school counselors in which they can also discuss with nutritionists so that we can see what kind of menus to give our children at school because there are these schools where they eat lunch in school or there are places actually where you have to carry your own food. Yeah. What can a psychologist do when it comes to assisting in nutrition and child behavior? Basically, uh, I, I think most schools should include nutritionist when they're making the timetable or anything concerning foods. Oh wow, that's because a, mm-hmm. because you find that like if you look at most schools, maybe public schools or where children are eating, they eat the same kind of food every day. Yes, that's true. So what is the effect here? You know sometimes we, we start blaming others. It is very easy to point a finger at somebody, yet the problem is from me. That's true. So when we include a nut- nutritionist in the system yeah. of our schools, we'll achieve the best results because you look at uh, schools where maybe where I was working before I got out, we, we had a nutritionist who was assisting us in making the timetable. Mm-hmm. The menu for And even school. the menu for school. Yes. That is whatever the kids were to eat, mm. it had to go hand in hand with the activities. Mm. Because like when you have games on Fridays, mm. the food that they should eat is different <laughs> from the foods they're going to take on Wednesday. How so? Because they need more energy on Friday when yes. they're outside. Yes, for sports so day you can't, and you can't eat, you can't give a child yeah. ugali uh-huh. on a Wednesday, uh-huh. you expect this child to be in class. Why, why are they sleeping in class? Because of the ugali at lunchtime. The digestion system. Yes. You are overloading the system. <laughs> yes. The system is overworked. Yes. They need a lot of water. They need a lot of stuff in the body. So the, the body system shuts down. Right. Because of the food that has been taken. So if we can, if the schools can put this into uh, consideration, that they should have nutritionists who can just advise them. Because even, uh, I think even parents should also be uh, told these things. Yeah, of course. Schools should also consider having parents sitting them down and talking to them. Yes. Because some parents are really ready to change, That's considering true. because of their kids. Mm. Because the challenge is from when they come to preschool, mm-hmm. that is uh, five years to seven years. Mm. It's a very crucial age for I them. See. Yeah. I want you to pause there because we're going to pick up there. Uh, okay. We need to go and check out a couple of clips that we have put down for you guys to understand exactly how nutrition and be- behavior is connected. Let's check it out. Okay. Anybody. 
The nonprofit group says it reviewed two dozen scientific studies. The group says most of the studies focused on artificial colors. The objective was to look for a connection between the dye and worsening behavior in kids with ADHD. But even if your kids don't have ADHD, there's a lot to think about when you're out buying food. Angela Ardolino, the publisher of Tampa Bay Parenting Magazine, joins us now to talk about the other health implications and also how to make the best choices when we're out shopping around. And we were talking during the break about sugar and some of the things that we should watch out for. But there's a lot. If they have too much sugar or high fructose corn syrup, they actually get super hyper and their blood sugar rises and then crashes, which then usually means they're going to be irritable, tired, and, and it's going to be difficult for them to concentrate. But on top of that, you want to avoid not only the sugars, but you want to uh, take, it, take out preservatives, additives like our artificial food color. As they continue to fix that, yeah. Do you mind picking up where you have left off? Yeah. Mm, when you look at the aspect of sugars and the the effect on the brain development and health-wise, uh, I, I was saying that don't give your children sugars mm -hmm. in the state of how they are, because uh, mostly we, uh, you will realize that parents sometimes give their kids sugars in form of glucose which is a, a very good form it is easily digested but insoluble sugars is very dangerous more so when you, okay so some kids pick their behaviors from gen, uh, genetic order like mm. they pick them from their parents right some parents are also aggressive some yeah. are talkative some are quiet but now if you find a child who is so talkative and hyper then this child is also given uh, foods that are having too much sugar. Too many sodas and juices. Yeah. Mm. So you are raising the bar from 20% mm. to 60%. Mm. This child is uncontrolled in class. Mm. They're always up and down, they're jumpy. And you know, you, you, even if you can just do a research, if you give a child, even a child who is maybe one year old or one and a half, they're, they're, they're being given supplement foods. Try to give that child food having sugars, then observe the behaviors. To be something else. We have one in the house. If you give him foods <laughs> in sugar, yeah. he will go around walking, talking, jumping, and shouting. Wow. But when you give them foods like the, uh, the ones like the sweet potatoes, right. the natu natural foods, I, I would prefer kids to be given natural foods rather than mm -hmm. the ready-made ones that we go to the supermarket and buy because we don't have time. I agree. Yeah. And, and I want both of you to discuss on this particular one because I have an interesting, when, when you were saying that, something popped into my mind. Yeah. I've never seen a kid who's going to be happy to eat a sweet potato, you know? So I'm asking myself, how, how, how do you tell this child? This kid is throwing a tantrum. They want a sweet. Maybe you've not bought them sweets in like a month because, you know, you're trying to be a good parent or whatever. Yeah. And, and they're just really not understanding why you'd rather this child eat something else, something healthy, a vegetable or something. I, maybe you can tell us, how do you feel about that and what can we do as parents in order to help our children um, accept these alternative foods? Because I think it's going to be hard, especially Soria chips, <laughs> this fried, fried <laughs> chips all the time. There's so many junk food. People are going crazy for junk food. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. what no, are you going to do? This is the question parents come with in clinics. Yeah. Like, Oh my God, my child doesn't want porridge. I can't force my child. And then you know we're in this generation. I, I'm not gonna force my child to take what they want. As it was, utakunya yoji, sindio, maliza yoji. You know, well, it's not good to force a child mm. any type of food. But mm. generally, however a food is introduced to you, mm. you either end up loving the food or hating the food. How it's introduced to you. How it's introduced to you. Even for an adult. If fish is introduced to you uh, when it's merely looking bad, you may never take fish again. True. But if it's presented in a really beautiful way, Freshly you love fish fried. for the rest of your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So first of all, parents, and I hear people say healthy foods are not really that. They are ish-ish. They're not really that beautiful. They're not palatable. But the thing is, how do you prepare that food for your child? 
that's you know true. when you're presenting the food to the child how do you present it do you present like everything mashakura way that's true or do you put it in a really wise beautiful way mm. and then the kind of plates you also give the child mm. you just give a child a certain dark weird looking plates mm. or is there, is there a plate that even the child you know a plate can even make the can motivate the child eat food that's true i've heard i've heard the kind of plates that you use the shape of the plate that you use can yeah. either make someone eat less or eat more or yeah. eat more just and yeah it's amazing and even as parents what kind of environment do you create for that child as they are eating mm. are you shouting Kabla ni maliza hapo kusha maliza hapo. You know, or are you really encouraging them and telling them, you know what, mm. you're eating vegetable because it's really good for you, mm. you grow strong, mm -hmm. you'll be beautiful, you'll be like so-and-so, because children have that so-and-so they want to be like when they grow up. Okay, now so, we don't have too much time. That's why I yeah. wanted him to say something. But you're saying the truth because for me personally, and I'll tell you straight, I don't like bad food. I don't like bad food. If food does not taste good, I'm not going to eat it, even yeah. if it's vegetarian. Yeah. So I understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And there are many people who are like me. And when you're eating food to children, it can be very off-putting. And it's important, I think, even for mothers. Look up recipes. Look up new ways to do things. We're not saying look up recipes I'm a Jew. No. Mm -hmm. The people on YouTube who are putting a fresh spin on Kenyan dishes, on Kenyan food, they're putting a nice fresh spin to things. And they're tasting wonderfully and they're becoming really appealing. And as we're closing, maybe you can, you can give us the uh, psychological aspect of what she has said. You know, when you look at a child, yeah. mostly before a child, when the children are learning to eat, they will pick something, they give you to eat. If you take it, they'll have that confidence to eat. So are you accompanying them in eating? Because most parents, they, they just give food and they expect the children to start eating. But you know, when you introduce them gradually, mm -hmm. you should also make the create an ambience of mm. good eating. Mm. A mother should be singing. You can en enjoy the, yeah. the meal as yeah. though you are the one who was eating. Yeah, the TV, by the yeah. Way. and you know, when, when you are engaging the child where the child is eating and doing a lot of stuff, it encourages the child. Yeah. It's not a, mat a matter of finishing the food. Mm. It's a matter of how do we take the food. Yeah, sure. And singing, singing it, it has been proven. Mm. Mothers who sing to their kids, their kids are healthy. But some, some just say it, it's, it, it's not a must. The color of the plate really attracts the kids. Kids are so attracted to colors. So how you present the food, it's not a matter of, you know, we should not look at it that I have to force them. No. How do you, you introduce this food? Mm -hmm. Children at one year old, they don't, they, their st taste buds are now still developing. Yeah. So it's how you're going to introduce the food and what you're going to put into the food that will make their taste buds improve. So it's not a matter of like just pushing them, no. But please, as mothers, let us create that ambience. As teachers, we sing for them. What about mothers? Wow. In class, yes. there's nothing you can teach in preschool without a song. That's true. Everything, even if they're saying their names, you have to sing for them to say their names. So what about food? Mm -hmm. This was a learning because you are a product of the knowledge you have and the environment where you're brought in. So th that's all about it. Well understood. Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Well, for me, I'd like to tell you that for the kids pick up habits presented to them by, by their parents. Uh -huh. So your child is a result of what you give them and what you yourself feed. So you really feeding incorrectly, don't expect your child to feed well. Unless they reach a point in life where they, are, they make a decision like, oh my God, I need to be healthy. But they start picking up these habits from you, from the dining table at home. So, I see. Thank you for that. Which means don't eat junk foods uh -huh. and give your children other foods. Mm. They'll copy what you do. Yeah. Mm. They pick that. They'll pick that. So if you want them to eat these other foods, you also eat that natural food. In front of them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. We have had a psychologist, Mr. James, and a nutritionist, Miss Emily, come here on set and talk to us about nutrition. And I hope you guys have learned something as parents, how you can feed your children, the order in which to feed them, 
change your plates at home, learn some things online, and Google in how you can best give your children the nutrition that they need and force that milk down their throats so that was good to dog or come and mimi. I do love you guys so much, and that's what we do on this show, Maze, is just to give you guys awareness about different health issues, both mentally and body wise. Thank you so much for tuning in. Catch us on Monday, same time. My name is Jeremy Chache, and you can find me on select platforms at joy underscore mochache.